Hello and welcome, I'm Lincoln, and today I'm going to be unboxing the Anycubic Photon Mono X 6K resin printer. Yes, that is a mouthful. We're just going to call it the PMX 6K like Anycubic does now. All right, I know there are other videos about this machine and it's not brand new. It's been out for a couple years, I think. But I saw a lot of negative videos and reviews about the printer because it was locked into Photon Workshop originally. Well, it's not the case anymore. Leachie and Cheeto Box work great with this printer now. But I got a little more about that in just a minute. All right, the rest of this video is from my perspective being a newbie to resin printing. I've been printing with an FDM for a while and I decided it was time to start resin printing now that they've really, they've really come a long way. All right, so with all that out of the way, I have to say this printer is amazing. The detail is crisp with sharp edges and points. And that's all thanks to a 6K resolution and over 20 million pixels on the screen, which is nine and a quarter inches. It's, it's huge. The build plate is massive. The other thing that's really cool is you have the ability to adjust the light intensity if you want to print with specialty resins of any kind. The anti-aliasing has been very impressive. And if you don't know what that is, the slashes can set each layer to have gray pixels at the edges to soften transitions from layer to layer. And it can do this thanks to the high 6K resolution without sacrificing any, any details. It just makes the print smoother to the touch. It looks, looks better. Now you can still see the layer lines, which is kind of weird, they're darker, but you can't hardly feel them with your fingernail. But, and there is a but, for all this to work, the firmware needs to be updated first. And I'll have a quick step-by-step -step guide to help you with this for the Mac. But the process is going to be similar for Windows. It's just a simple update for the machine. But I'm going to have some tips to help make the process easier since the firmware is hidden on the website and not really a lot of help on how to do it there. I'll have a couple tips about the files and the USB drive as well. All right. So before the firmware update, I could print with a lychee slicer just fine, but the anti-aliasing did not work and Cheeto Box did not print at all. After the update, everything worked flawlessly everywhere. I'll explain everything as I go through the rest of the video. All right, if you're new to resin printing, I have some tips on basic setup and tools of your work area and things that I figured out that I like to use. It makes it so much easier and cleaner. I also have a flex plate install and how to put the Z-axis shim so you can home your build plate easier. I'm gonna break up this video into chapters. So if you just wanna look at the firmware update or flex plate install, feel free to skip ahead if you want. And also, if you're interested in learning 3D sculpting on the iPad, so you can print your own designs like this, check out my channel and I'll put a link to one of my playlists here. Okay, let's get to a quick unboxing and a little bit more about the printer specs. So here you can see this thing was incredibly well packaged, lots of foam, lots of plastic, and it, it was, completely scratch free. It's not so already. I've already put some scratches on the cover and have some resin on there. And if you do get resin on your cover, I do recommend cleaning it off immediately because it will like etch it. Came with some extra tank screws, which I thought was pretty cool. And here's the only issue it has, this little foot thing that goes on the bottom of the tanks kept falling out. So I ended up just using some painter's caulk. I mean, any glue would work. I just use a little bit just to hold it in place because it'd fall out every time I flip the tank over. And here you have some nice, really nice adjustable feed if your surface isn't flat. Peeling all the protector layers off and I do recommend using the screen screen protector. It is a very good thing on here and I'll, I'll show it here in just a second. And this is the build plate with a nice laser etched surface on it. And I didn't use this. I probably should have just tried out, but I went immediately and put a flex plate on because I want to do some pretty small, small things. And I, I don't want to have to try and fight trying to take them off the plate and not break them. And I sanded it because I didn't feel like the surface had enough etch to it, but it was completely unnecessary. I actually ended up smoothing it out a little bit. And here it is heating up the flex plate and the build plate with a heat gun warming it up and sticking it on and most people recommend waiting on this i immediately put it in and put it into use now the screen server is really good i ended up getting a drop of resin on the bottom of my tank and it cured 
to the screen protector, but I was able to just peel it right off with some alcohol. So definitely save my screen. I'd highly recommend one. Now here, just putting the bill plate on, and you'll see here, because I have the flex plate on, that it's, it's really tight. There's not a lot of room between the Z arm and the bill plate. So I ended up, I'll show you in just a second how to put a shim in and fix this, because that's that was a little scary, it was a little tight. There wasn't a lot of room for adjustment and it also had an issue because it, it was had a little bit of a groaning and groaning noise when it would come down to home. So you hit zero, hit enter, and then it's gonna ask if you wanna raise a platform, res, raise a platform, the build plate, and then you can pop your tank in and pour resin and you're ready to go. Here I'm pointing out the Z axis and I already have the shims in. I'll take it out and put it all back together so you can see it. But this is what tells the machine it's home. And this down at the bottom, it goes into the between those two blades right there and it's just an optical sensor. So it's pretty easy to adjust and move. All you have to do is put a shim underneath it to bring it down and it homes it really nice. And then you have plenty of room and it doesn't make any noise. Here you can see I have the shims already installed. So I'm gonna pull this apart real quick and just show you how it goes all back together. Now, these screws are longer. These are M3 by eight millimeter long, and you need a little bit longer screw. The ones that come with it won't be long enough to actually hold everything together once you put your shims in place. And I'll put a link down below to the one I found on Thingiverse, because I wasn't really sure what I needed is this isn't at my house, it's over at my little shop, and I didn't want to have to go back and forth and just make one on Tinkercad, so old ones and new ones. And you can see there a couple little shims, and you can also just print, either one of them probably would be enough. I just put stack two of them together, so I had a little bit more. So we'll stack them together, put them in. Now here you'll see I screw up, and I have the the sensor sensor blade going the wrong direction it's pointed out and it should be pointed in so i catch that in just a second turn it around you don't want to do this because if you leave that out and try to go down i'm not sure it would probably still catch it but or no it wouldn't it would be far enough out it wouldn't catch so that would be bad so you want to make sure you align this properly when you put it back together and i'll speed it up here in just a second this is just to show you how to do this and how to properly put it back together. You know, just go back and forth, get it nice and flat. And once you've got it set in place, just adjust it so it's perpendicular to the back of the machine. And you'll see the little sensor goes down right between the blades and you'll see the light kick on and that's when it knows it's home. So really easy to adjust and you'll see it a little bit easier here. And now that I've put the spacer in, now you have plenty of room with your flex plate and you won't hear your machine groaning. Here just doing an exposure test to make sure the lights work and the masking is working on the screen and works perfectly. And I use this just for the lubricant and it seems to work really well. The Wi-Fi antenna, put that on. I'm not sure I'll use it but I just wanted to put it on so I don't get a of spill into the machine. It really is a nice well-built heavy-duty machine. It's all aluminum cased, really well built. It's where you put your thumb drive in, your power switch, and your power cord plugs into it. And then the back with the fans. And now we'll just pour in a little bit of resin, hit print, choose the test file, hit print, or play, hit the play button, and off it goes and it shows you how many layers it's going to print and roughly how long it's going to take and it's it's in the neighborhood it's not perfect but it's pretty close and here the you can see the exposure as this comes down because the resin's translucent which is kind of cool to watch and this is i don't know three quarters of the way through the print and this is the speed it's actually printing at this isn't sped up or slowed down and this is just all the settings it has on the test print that the machine comes with. So
So it printed really well the first print. It was really clean, didn't have any issues. And as it finishes up, it pulls the print up high and displays it for you and then lets it drain all off. So here we'll just pop the cover off. And you can see I'm a little tight on space and I have to pull it off just right. So there it is, first print, nice and clean. It looked really cool on the on the build plate, on the flex plate. And it was so easy because you just it took me a second to figure out how I wanted to do it, but it's kind of set it in there and just flex the plate and it just pops right off. So much easier than trying to scrape it off with a scraper. And then, you know, the flex plate, you can just wipe off. And if you wanted to put this back in, you could. It wouldn't be that big a deal to just wipe off the magnet. Okay, so my very simple curing station, just a galvanized bucket and a light and a turntable. And my phone as a timer. Works pretty well. And I cured it in a couple minutes. It didn't take long to cure that clean, clear, translucent. Now here's an image of the FAP, and you can see I've got a couple dents in the bottom. And I had replaced the FEP previous to this because I had had some issues and it looked like it was cut all the way through. But here's a strip of FEP when I replaced it. And you can see this thing's only three quarter inch wide, but it stretches to about 14 inches before it finally breaks in two. So you don't have to be as nervous about this as you might think. I mean, it is pretty strong plastic. Now, this is some kind of the weird thing with this. The version number stays the same after you do the update for the firmware. And the biggest thing with this is make sure that you format your USB drive that you're going to use to put these files in in a fresh FAT32. I tried it a couple times without reformatting the drive and it just didn't work. So just go to the Anycubic website, go to the page for the Photon Mono X 6K. Go down to the bottom and you'll see the firmware update. It's not over in the support, it's on the actual page for the printer. So on the Mac, you just go to the download and you don't have to do anything with these files. They, they come in a bin format, dot .bin, and you don't have to unzip them or do anything to them, just leave them alone. Because I tried to, I was trying to figure that out and I kept trying to do something with them and there's, there's no need to do anything with it. So open up the file. You have a README section, and this is where it tells you you need to figure out which motherboard you have in the machine, which is pretty easy. Just look at this JPEG image, and it'll show you the difference, how to get there, system, info, and you either have HC at the end or the H7, which is just a big, long string of numbers. So depending on which one you have, I had the HC, so you have to download two different files, go to the README file to tell you which one to do first, Go ahead and put them both on your formatted thumb drive and just print them in the order it says. And it's really simple. You just put your thumb drive in and pick, it'll, you go to print, which is kind of weird. You think it would just be like a download or something, but you actually like quote unquote print the file and it updates it for you. So it's really easy. And here I'm just showing you the README file for the other the other style. And that's all you have to do is the one file for the H7 motherboard. Really easy to do, like I said, just plug it in, pick which file you want on from your, because you'll see the test print on there. Well, no, you won't because you have it formatted. But you'll have the, the different file types on there. Just hit pick it, hit print, it'll print however long it takes to do the firmware update. And then you're done. Super, super easy. So here's the Anycubic test cube printed in the translucent green. And this is in Anycubic resin. Printed really well. Didn't change the file at all. And then here, after a couple tries, this was the third try of, get it, of trying to get this one printed, the bearded yell. And it turned it out beautiful. And yes, I know I have a little bit of the gray powder on there. And that was, for me, scrubbing a little too hard with a toothbrush. And here's one of the two pancakes I printed to begin with. And that was my fault, it wasn't a machine. It was because, as you can see here, I was trying to use all light supports and that just didn't work. I tried a couple different versions of the lights and then finally decided to go to the mediums and had a successful print. And you could see that, you know, the medium 
prints or the medium supports even had a better base and everything. I mean, I'm lucky probably it didn't do something worse, but yeah, after a couple pancakes and going to have your support, perfect prints. Now here, this was my first attempt at trying to use the anti-aliasing. This was a file I made in Nomad Sculpt on the iPad and was just trying to print. And I thought, well, you know what? I'll go ahead and try the anti-aliasing and lychee. And well, one side printed pretty good. The other side did not. And it was really weird that it failed only on one side. So then I went back to Nomad. I just wanted to prove that I could print a file off Nomad off the iPad. And I did a little bit more detail to the sculpt and printed it without anti-aliasing and it was perfect. So that's, that's when I went, up, went through to figure out how to get the updates set up. Now here's just a couple of prints I did after doing the update and realized that I could print in Cheetah Box, could print in Lychee, could print in Photon Workshop, and the anti-aliasing works in all of them. And here you can see there's a couple lines here and there nothing too bad and I pretty much would have to say because I printed these at the same time that that was probably a support issue because I printed these solid and hollow them out because these are a little taller they're about three inches tall so they're a little bit taller than a normal well probably double the size of a normal mini so once you get a couple layers of paint on them all those layer lines are gone I mean what little bits there is completely disappears so if you're new, this is just kind of, you know, a basic setup, a tub of alcohol, a toothbrush, the clippers, spatula that come with the machine, and a pair of tweezers really helps. And then here, I'll show you, I've got a, a file that I'll put it down below. That's what I use. I print it on my FDM printer for the funnel to put your resin back in your bottles. And here's just a quick demo of the silicone mats super easy to clean up spray it with a little alcohol and just wipe it off it's super easy you don't even hardly have to use the alcohol but you can see the alcohol kind of dissolves it so here i'm just going to pop the top off and use the funnel I'll show you how to use the paint funnel or the paint filter and put it back in now this is sun Lu resin i used so you can't use the this other funnel i had to actually make a different funnel Make it a little bit bigger to fit over the neck because the neck of the bottle is a little bit bigger around for the threads. And here, just so I can keep everything in frame, I move the alcohol tub over, which I normally don't. I have that nice big mat for plenty of room to put everything and not have to worry about it. But you'll see, I just pull the build plate off with a magnet on it for the flex plate and just drop it in the alcohol. I don't leave it in there for a long time. So it, I don't worry about it dislodging the, the adhesive on the magnet. So here is a little bit different funnel than the one I'll have the link for. The one that I have the link in will fit any cubic and Elgu bottles fine. But here you can see that I just pour the resin in. And this is after doing a couple minis. And take a close look here. You'll see the sludge in the bottom of the resin. And it's not stuck to the FEP, that's just sitting in the resin, and it's just bits of cured resin. So, you know, there's they're not big enough to actually get stuck between the build plate and your and your FEP and cause a crack in your screen, but they can float around in there and they'll act like a mask. So if you have bits of cured resin in your in your vat, when you go to print, it's gonna have it's going to put holes in your print because it's acting like a mask. So it's not that you have to clean it out every time, and I don't always clean it out every time, but I did end up with that Igor on his hand had a couple little holes in him because he had, there was some cured resin float, floating around in the vat somewhere. So here you can see putting the vat for the machine on top of my tub there Makes it kind of nice because then it keeps the mess all in one place. Throw out the paint filter, clean out your funnel. And you can see here, I'm just kind of like, I don't know where to put everything because this is not normally how I operate. Like I said, I have that tub of alcohol off to the side to make it a little bit easier to clean up and move around. So here I've taken the bill plate out of the tub of 
alcohol, just wipe it off, clean it up. I mean, the, the one thing you don't want to do is get a drop of resin on your screen. So just make sure everything's clean and dry. I'll slap the, I'm just going to put the bill plate and you can see it snaps on pretty good and it's pretty strong. You know, I don't have a control to see what it would have been like to have a print on the bill plate without the flex plate. So I don't know if there's an issue with that. You know, if the flex plate tries to pull off if you have too much suction force, but I haven't really printed anything big enough for that yet, I don't think. And the bill plate has always ended up being in the proper place. It doesn't move around on the bill plate. So I think for me, it's any layer lands I've had so far have just been, I need to learn how to support a little bit better. And that's one of the biggest things with the resin printing I've learned is just learning how to support and where to support, how many supports, how big they should be, how to place them. It's just, it's all a learning curve. And I've, I've gotten a little bit better about it and I've been scaling back because I got a little a little crazy with the first view because I was I was getting a little disgruntled not getting any prints to come out those first couple bearded yells I did. So here I'm just using a regular paper towel around the top edge of the vat just cleaning up the excess resin and alcohol and I don't use the regular paper towels down inside of the tank much. I mean I might you know get some of the major excess out but I usually don't. I'll use the blue shop towels and those I'll put a link for those two. They're just simple, plain blue shop towels, and they're not quite as abrasive as a regular paper towel is, and they work really well. So I just use them just to clean out the very inside and the FEP. So here they are right here, just the blue shop towels. And they're not the microfiber towels that everybody talks about, I don't think. I've just been using these because they don't, they don't leave any lint behind. So they're a good option for this. And if you do have a little bit of scratching on here, I'll use the dry Teflon lube, the PTFE, in the spray can. And it works really well. It, it fills in all those little scratches and they pretty much go away. So it'll be a little cloudy, but it's not enough to make a difference on the print. I haven't noticed any difference in the printing using it instead of using you know nothing and having a super expensive paper towels to use. So here just spraying a little bit more alcohol in, cleaning up a little bit more and wiping it down. So I, I take a little time getting it nice and clean because I really don't want anything, any chunks in there. And I'm just trying to get all the excess alcohol out because it does take a little while for it to dry when it's that liquid and there's that much of it. And here I'm going around to the bottom just making sure I don't have any drops. Like I said, I had that one, it was in the corner and um, luckily, so I didn't have anything printing over there. So the bill plate wasn't coming down right at that, that area, thankfully. So I got lucky with that and I didn't crack my screen. So here just keeping everything clean and I just, like I said, I'm just get a little bit nervous. I just want to make sure everything's nice and clean and it only takes a second to make sure that you're not gonna have a drop of resin where you really don't want it. And it is pretty nice, the tank does have those little feet down there that hold the, hold the vat off the, off the surface you're setting it on. So here I'm just using a little bit of alcohol and I'm not spraying it directly on, just spraying it on the rag and just wiping down the base just to make sure there's nothing on there no dust, no dirt, and especially no resin, for sure. And it is really nice that that machine comes with one. So here's the super lube that I use, and it's just dry Teflon, and I hose it on pretty good. And I was nervous about this too at first because it says right on the can, don't spray on tension plastic which I'm like well that's kind of what this is but I've, it's been fine and it's this stuff is thick enough and tough enough after I did that little test on the stretch piece I was a lot less nervous about using this plastic because I could tell that it it has a lot of tension on it 
Here you can see there's a little bit of cloudiness to it and it could be on the inside, it could be on the outside. And I usually spray both sides and it's just that one last step that I make sure there's nothing on the bottom of the tank. And you can see there that it's already cleared up pretty well. And it really just comes down to how many layers you want to spray on there. At some point it's not really going to make a difference. I just keep spraying it on and wiping it down until it clears up good. Now what you see there, that cloudiness, that's just moisture evaporating. You can see it, you can see it, see it clearing up. And here, that would have been okay, that little bit of cloudiness, but I went ahead and just go ahead and spray one more layer and just wipe it off. And it just makes it nice and clear. You can tell when I use that dry lube that it's working because it doesn't pull nearly as hard between each layer, so that's been kind of nice. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this helped, and I will see you guys next time. All right, thanks.